why revelation in today's time you may be seated why revelation in today's time <clears throat> somebody ought to ask the question what is it that separates the Bible from every other book that has ever been written I said I asked the question what is it that separates the Bible from every other book that has ever been written in history the answer 30 percent of the Bible is prophecy 30 percent of the Bible is what everybody 30 percent of the Bible is prophecy I call it prophetic utterances what did I say prophetic utterances not parables not experiences prophetic utterances it is the golden cord of scripture I said it is the golden cord of scripture that golden cord of prophetic scripture makes us the remnant. Uh -huh. I said that golden cord of scripture makes us the remnant. Prophecy sets us apart. I said prophecy sets us apart. The scarlet thread of red is the cord of salvation. That's the blood which all denominations have. They, we all have the blood of Christ. For if it had not been for the blood of Jesus Christ, we would not and could not be saved. Can I get a witness in here? I, I said, had it not been for the blood of Christ, none of us could be saved. But in order to be saved, there must be a renament. There must be a church with a prophecy. I said there must be a church with the prophecy. Well, well, it's one thing to write colorful words and poetry that will make lovers blush. But when, but when you can write in one year what will happen years later, you have gone to a different level. Is that right? That's what we call prophetic utterances. Revelations, prophecy will take place just the way it is written. Blessed is he who hears, listens, and obeys the word of God. Prophecy is not a maybe. What is prophecy? Prophecy is not a maybe. Prophecy is a thus said the Lord. You, you, can, you can take that to the bank. Prophecy causes one to look through the window of today and see tomorrow. Prophecy allows one and teaches one not to attach permanency to your today or to your future. You see, prophecy shows you a window of today and also a window of the future. For only God can tell the beginning from the end. Only God is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. When other faiths wanted to know something about Bible prophecy, they looked to the Adventists. Ask John Hagee. We, we have an end time message. What do we have? We have an end time message. The world has taken our health message and are doing better with it than we are. But, 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 they, but they are attempting to twistify prophecy to make it suit Sunday worship and we are helping them by not preaching prophecy. Our young people want to know how to make it through the week. That's, that's, that's good. I want to know how to make it through the week too. But I think they need to know about what's going to happen in the latter days so you can make it through the latter days. You remember Marvin Gaye, don't you? In his song, What's Going On? Well, what's going on in El Paso? What's going on in Dayton, Ohio? Trump's fault with his speech of giving credence to organization of racial hatred. What's going on? Well, we are people of prophecy, and it gets me upset when we don't seem to care about prophecy anymore. Pre 
preaching prophecy gives me warning. Get ready, like T.D. Jacob. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. T.D. Jacob. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. You can hear social gospel preaching any day of the week. Twice on Sunday from any denomination, from any church, even our church. But when this church begins to walk through Daniel and Revelation, it causes other denominations to tremble. Walk in here, Daniel. Daniel 2 says, I saw a statue. What kind of a statue did you see, Daniel? I saw a statue, head of gold, chest of silver, skirt area of brass, legs of iron, toes of iron and of clay. What else did you see, Daniel? I see a stone. What kind of a stone? Well, it's a stone that will wipe out the image and my kingdom shall last forever. Well, man will try to use a stone. Oh, yes. After they hang me so high that if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. They will take me down from that old cross. Then place me in a tomb. Roll a stone at the entrance thinking I can't get out. Then place a seal on it. Uh, but don't they know I'm a rock in a rock? I'm a rock on a rock. I'm a rock uh, of all the ages. Is that all, Daniel? Well, no, that's not all. Daniel 7.25 says, well, puny man, what are you going to do? I'm going to think to change times and laws. Do you see something else, Daniel? Yes, what is it, Daniel? Unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. What's that all about, Daniel? Well, the judgment was set. And the books were open. Everybody will have to stand on their own at that time. You're going to have to stay tuned for the final event. Can't tell you who is going to re reveal it. But all I know, Daniel 12 says, When all this trouble begins at that time, shall Michael stand up, which standing up for the children of of uh, thy people until then Daniel shut up the book yeah. you have the times and dividing of times uh, Daniel shut up the book no kingdom will ever rule the world again Acts Rome oh they've tried it Acts Napoleon Ask Hitler, ask Mussolini, ask the British who said the sun will never set on the Roman Empire ask Russia ask America even just where we are Daniel we're down in the feet of iron and of clay, weak and divided, soon to pass away. Shut up the book, Daniel. In the time of the end, knowledge shall be increased and men shall run to and fro. So shut up the book. But it's not over when Daniel shuts the book. The temporary covenant has not become ratified. With the one who John the Baptist cried out in the wilderness, here comes the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. When Daniel shuts the book, antitype has not met type. When Daniel shuts the book, Isaiah's prophecy has not come to pass. Uh, he was wounded for our transgressions. Uh, he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are here. There was no word heard from God for some 400 years after Malachi quit writing. It was as if God went off somewhere pouting. But it's not until Matthew shows up until you hear these words, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Oh, I could go on talking about Jesus if I had the time. I could talk about that experience with that demonic who lived in the tombs. But when he met Jesus, he was changed from somebody to nobody. Oh, I could talk about that time when Peter thought he saw a ghost walking on the water. When he realized it was Jesus, he said, Lord, uh, can I come? Uh, that's when Peter stepped out on the water and, and he started walking on water like a pedestrian walks on a city sidewalk. And while Peter got beside himself and said, look at me, that's when he started sinking. Well, when he started sinking, Peter didn't have time to do like some of us pray one of those long drawn out prayers. Uh, like, Lord, remember the sick and afflicted. Uh, Peter just started praying, Lord, save me. 
I could talk about those ten lepers who were healed as they went. But I want to get to the one who Jesus said was his beloved. I think I'm talking about John. You recall James and John wanted to be on his left and right side. Jesus responds, do you think you can drink that bitter cup? When all others left, Jesus, John was the only one at the cross. But Jesus requested of John to take care of his mother. You recall the disciples were told by Jesus he would return soon. And they decided and thought that Jesus was going to return within the next couple of years or the next couple of months. And they turned the world upside down. During that time, Saul becomes Paul, even though the apostles did not trust him. But Barnabas took him. Barnabas took him and if he had not taken him, we never would have had the book of Acts. Never would have had the book of Romans. Never would have had 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Never would have had Galatians and Ephesians. Uh, Peter was hung upside down. James, the brother of John, was killed by the sword. The Romans attempted to kill John. They put him in a pot of boiling oil. But he had on the world's second heat and fireproof suit, tailor-made by God. You recall the first suit was made to fit those three Hebrew believers. Upon discovering they could not kill John, they placed him in a desolate place worse than Alcatraz. Can't you see John? He's old now. No one to bring him a cloak when it's cold like Paul requested of Timothy while in jail. Can't you see old John gathering wood? History does not say how John made a hut for housing or a garden for his food. History does not say how John ate but in my sanctified imagination, maybe those same birds that fed Elijah at the brook fed John. History does not say what day of the week John was deposited on the Isle of Patmos. But whatever day it was, it was not the preparation day, the day before the Sabbath or the Sabbath day. Because I see John startled by a tap on his shoulder. He looks around and he sees no one. I see John saying, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Revelation 1, Jesus is in the midst of the candlesticks. He is in the church. Doesn't matter how rocky things may get, but he's in the church. I taught you all to know that you may leave the church getting mad at the church, but Jesus is still in the church. The church is the love of his life. The church is the pride of his very being. The church is his every thought. Revelation 2, 3 says Jesus is the lamb. He's in the midst of the seven churches and on the outside of the church. Revelation 4 talks about the seven seals. Revelation 12 talks about the remnant. Who are these people? They have gone through great trials and tribulations. They have gone and had their Gethsemane experience. They have stood in defense of truth and righteousness when the majority, even in the church, has cast aside the truth. They have fought the battles of the Lord when champions are few. This will be our test. Evil angels crowded around, pressing darkness upon them, but they kept on keeping on. Revelation 13 talks about the mark of the beast. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for his number is the number of a man. Revelation 14 talks about three angels' message. I saw three angels. What are they doing, John? They are flying in the midst of heaven, not with a sometimey gospel, but with an everlasting gospel. Not with a temporary gospel, but with an everlasting gospel. Revelation 17, Babylon is fallen. Come out of her, my people. Don't be fooled. Every foul thing is Babylon. Don't be fooled by every wind of doctrine. Don't you be fooled about death, that when you die, you go to heaven. If not, 
purgatory. You stay there until you pay and pray your way out so you're really not dead if you can pay money and pray your way out. Y'all didn't get that. Doesn't matter what day you keep. Any old day will do. Just lift up holy hands. That will do. But God says remember the Sabbath day. Six days shall thou and do what? But the what? Of the of the week is the of the Lord thy God. Revelation the chapter 20 talks about the thousand years. I'm so glad that the thousand years is going to show up. That's the time when Satan will be chained. That's the time when Satan will no longer be able to mess with me. Aren't you glad? That's the time when Satan is going to be chained. He's going to be stopped. That's the time when it's going to all be over. Revelation 21 says I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Is that all John? No I see a small cloud. I see a small cloud. It's coming out of Orion and that cloud is getting larger. What is it? Is it missiles? No. Is it some unknown weapon? No. It's the host of the Lord. The trump of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. Who is in that crowd? Adam is in that crowd. Eve is in that crowd. Isaiah is in that crowd. Daniel is in that crowd. Jeremiah is in that crowd. Ezekiel is in that crowd. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is in that crowd. Paul is in that crowd. Is that all? No, no, no. Jerry Lee is in that crowd. Jerry Riches is in that crowd. Harold is in that crowd. Sister Felix is in that crowd. Penny is in that crowd. Is that all? Laura Hubbard is in that crowd. Sammy Thomas is in that crowd. E. e. Thomas is in that crowd. E. e. Cleveland is in that crowd. Charles Dudley is in that crowd. Richard Brown is in that crowd. Randy Stafford is in that crowd. Lewis Henderson is in that crowd. Is that all? No. We who are alive shall be caught up to meet him in the air. Don't you want to go there? Don't you want to be there? Can't wait to see him. Look upon his face. Bow down before him. Thank him for his grace. Shake hands with the elders, the 20 and the four. Say hello to my loved ones who's gone on before. Jesus is preparing a place just for me if you want to be there see me in heaven time will be my friend day will never end summer winter spring or fall won't have to come at all time will be my friend day will never end oh I see Gerald Wright I see Ruth Galette, Tyrus Galette, Ruth Golson, Doris Hubbard, George Hubbard, hope to see you there. Do you know any of your loved ones that you want to see there? If you want to see them there, get on your feet, say yeah, 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 yeah.